Holmes with two times the mix-ins. Michelle has reached for enlightenment. Huh. We're going to leave you with a... Happening now. As COVID-19 cases climb, more people in their 20s are getting infected. How the city is trying to reach out to that younger crowd, tell them about the dangers of coronavirus. As the new school year approaches, more and more districts are opting for online learning. What parents can do to secure a quality education for their kids. Plus, there's been a great response for a COVID-19 vaccine trial study. It's getting started in SA. We've got an update in just a bit. And a nice change of pace today. Actually, some activity on the radar screen. We'll talk about that, look at rain chances for the future, and talk about how hot it'll get this weekend coming right up. It's a summer solution, road tripping in an RV. Coming up what you should know before you buy or rent. And fighting the coronavirus with the press of a button, the ideal local restaurant came up with to keep its customers safe. The News at 5 starts right now. And first at 5, taking a look at Sky 12, flying over the intersection right now of Eisenhower Road and Austin Highway on the northeast side. Yeah, we're told the construction crew hit a 4-inch gas line there. CPS Energy has shut down that intersection for repairs. But you see a lot of businesses are around this area. They tell us right now there are not any evacuations, but they do expect to have the intersection closed for a few hours. The young are not immune. A serious message proven by numbers. Many cases in this recent COVID-19 surge are coming from people in their 20s. As of July 11th, the most recent breakdown of cases by age available, people in their 20s made up about 24% of overall cases. Garrett Berger talked with the city about how they're trying to reach that younger crowd. City spokeswoman Laura Mays says the message the city of San Antonio sends out never really changes. Stay home when you can, wear a mask when you can, and maintain social distance. But the way they try to get it to people does. With young people making up a big portion of COVID-19 cases, she says there's a focused effort to reach out to them. So that they understand the ramifications of their actions if they don't wear a mask or if they don't practice social distancing. So they try to get to them where they are, which was one reason for an Independence Day weekend alert. And we know that most people in that age group are glued to their cell phones. So if they don't hear the news on a news station or they don't follow us on Facebook, we wanted to make sure that they got the message straight to their cell phones. They even used a meme format for an ad that weekend to try to connect. Then of course, there's good old fashioned reliance on the city's love of the Spurs. Protect each other and mask up San Antonio. And recently, a city and community coalition has started reaching out to people with larger followings online peer influencers, if you will, to see if they can help spread the word. People who have a trusted voice, who have a presence on social media, who have followers that are in those age ranges. Um, and it's not a pay to play, but it's it's finding people who will share as a service a message for their community. The city has also hired a marketing agency to help with messaging for different groups, including younger people, through the development of a new campaign that's expected to be rolled out within the next couple of weeks. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. We've got an update now on a call for volunteers for a COVID-19 vaccine trial. We first told you about on the news at five yesterday. We have learned 2,500 people have signed up to participate. Clinical Trials of Texas plans to start the study on July 27th. They've already started screening people. The trial involves two rounds of injections one month apart. While the vaccine is not live, some participants could experience mild side effects like fever, muscle aches, fatigue. If you'd like to participate, you must be 18 or older and any underlying health conditions like diabetes or hypertension must be managed. We have a link to register right now on KSAT.com. The Barrett County Sheriff's Office looking for a driver who took off after causing a crash this morning. Deputies say two pickup trucks were stopped at a red light near Highway 87 and FM 1516 in eastern Bear County. They say a driver in a third pickup truck hit one truck from behind, swipe, swipe, side swipe the other, and then took off running. One of the drivers was taken to the hospital with serious injuries. The man who caused the crash is believed to be from New Mexico. At last check, he had not been arrested. The San Antonio police believe two drivers were street racing before they crashed into a Southside home early this morning. It happened just before four at a home on Division and O'Ray Avenues. The family inside that home that was damaged says there is one main reason her family's life was spared in all this. That's what, that's what the fire department said too. The tree, if the tree wasn't there, then it would have just rammed into the whole house. The tree saved them. Police say before the two drivers crashed and ran off, they also plowed into several parked vehicles along the street 
and a utility pole. Power knocked out to more than 600 homes and businesses in the area. At last check, the drivers hadn't been arrested yet. A man's recovering after he was hit by a car on the city's southwest side last night. San Antonio police say he was crossing Palo Alto Road at West Villarette at around 1030. The driver told police he tried hitting the brakes when he came to that red light, but was unable to stop in time before he hit the victim. Police say the driver did stop to help, and that man was taken to University Hospital and is expected to be okay. The Texas Education Agency updating guidelines for the upcoming school year today. Districts can now postpone in-person learning for the first four weeks of school. After that, they can request to extend remote learning another four weeks if needed. There are exceptions for families that don't have Internet access or devices required for remote learning. The TEA says, quote, any student requiring on campus instruction during this period, like those who need reliable access to technology, will still be entitled to on campus instruction every day during this transition period, end quote. School boards in areas with high levels of community spread still have the option to delay the start of the school year, and school boards can approve full time hybrid models for high schools. Once students go back to on campus learning, school systems are required to post a summary of their plan to mitigate COVID-19 one week before the start of on campus activities. And shortly after these new guidelines were announced, the Texas State Teachers Association responded with demands for Governor Greg Abbott. They're calling for a statewide order to keep school buildings closed until the pandemic subsides and for more funding for remote learning. Today, state lawmakers say $200 million in CARES Act funds will go to the TEA to buy and distribute devices, hotspots, routers, and more. It will also be used for a reimbursement program for devices and home internet costs incurred by local education agencies from May 21st through September 1st. You can find all of this information on KSAT.com. In new at five from pre-K to colleges to universities, we were just talking about them. They're all relying on distance learning, even more as COVID-19 cases rise and the new school year approaches. However, it's said the jury is still out on how the virtual approach could impact the quality of education that students are getting. That's why an instructional consultant at the Region 20 Education Service Center is urging parents to be proactive. I think making sure you have an open line of communication with your child's teacher or teachers is first and foremost super important. A teacher, she says, have been forced to adapt the way they deliver instruction, much like students are having to adapt to the way they learn. We'll have more about this coming up at 6. Confirmed COVID-19 cases are increasing in at least 39 states as the U.S. sets more grim records, reporting more than 71,000 new cases in a single day. As ABC's Rena Roy explains, despite health experts urging all Americans to wear masks, some local leaders and residents continue to clash over face covering mandates. July is only half over, but it's already the worst month for coronavirus cases in the U.S., with more than 900,000 confirmed cases so far. Deaths from the virus climbing in at least 26 states, and hospitalizations are rising in 34 plus Puerto Rico. Arizona battling a staggering daily positivity rate of 25 percent, its ICUs 90 percent full. Florida with nearly 14,000 new reported cases in just one day. Teams of military medics are deploying to California and Texas to help hospitals overwhelmed with COVID patients. In a conversation with the Chamber of Commerce Foundation, Dr. Anthony Fauci urged all Americans to wear face coverings. We know that masks are really important and we should be using them, everyone. But still, the mask debate rages on across the country. Georgia's governor suing Atlanta's mayor for her mask wearing mandate, something he says he won't implement statewide, even though he is encouraging people to wear them. I am not afraid of the city uh, being sued and I'll put our policies up against anyone's any day of the week. Mayor Bottom's mask mandate cannot be enforced. But her decision to shutter businesses and undermine economic growth is devastating. I refuse to sit back and watch as disastrous policies threaten the lives and livelihoods of our citizens. Lowe's is the most recent company to join the growing list of major retailers like CVS and Target, now requiring face masks to help stop the spread of the virus. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. 
All right, check this out. It may seem strange, but concerns of the coronavirus have led one local restaurant to come up with kind of this quirky new way to keep customers safe. The Alamo Biscuit Company on Hebner Road is taking its COVID-19 precautions one step further. The company now has what they call a disinfecting portal at the front of their doors. That means before you walk in, you can be lightly misted with hand sanitizer on your entire body with one push of a button. We have customers using it as they go in, customers using it as they go out. A caution sign will let the customer know it's completely optional and to cover their, their, their eyes and their mouth. That way, that's, you know, that's the one thing that we do require. It is completely safe for your skin. I kind of want to try it. <laughs> what? What, one thing to consider, it's not proven the mist offers any additional level of protection. And while the disinfecting portal is not mandatory to enter the restaurant, masks are. They can be removed, of course, while you're eating. I wonder if that disinfectant smells just makes you feel safer. Maybe. As we step into another weekend, the city of Rockport is joining several other South Texas beaches in restricting access to vehicles. The change goes into effect for Rockport Beach Park at 11.59 p.m. on Sunday. It is scheduled to end August 1st. You can read more about this change and changes for Port Aransas, Padre Island, and Corpus Christi Parks right now on our website at ksat.com. I wonder if that misting helps make you cool off at least a little bit. <laughs> Even if it's I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Would be like nice. It is a mist. <laughs> I don't know. I just, the whole body, I just, Yeah, I know. It's not proven. It's called a shower in my opinion, but who knows? You can't just take a shower before you enter a, a facility, right? All right, satellite and radar, look at this. We actually have some rain to talk about. It's along the coastal plain. Hey, they need some rainfall too. They've been getting some rain right along the coastline and within a few counties uh, westward as well. And even one little shower right on the border of Bear and Wilson County. We'll take a closer look at that activity in a moment. Let's talk about the heat. 100 in Floresville, 90 in Panamaria. They're basically reaping the benefits of extra cloud cover right now. So temperatures are a bit lower there. 99 Mico Universal City at 100 and Seguin 99. So those showers along the coast coming to an end this evening, partly cloudy, humid, same old, basically. We'll talk about the weekend, which does have another slight chance of rain and beyond coming right up, Steve. Thank you, Adam. Nearly one month after the Supreme Court blocked a request to end the DACA program or Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program, a federal judge has ordered the Trump administration to begin accepting new DACA applications. That means hundreds of thousands of undocumented immigrants who came to the U.S. as children can begin applying again. The program protects them from deportation. The ruling was issued by Judge Paul Grimm of the U.S. District Court for the District of Maryland. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg revealing today she is undergoing another round of chemotherapy. The 87-year-old was first diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in 2009. This time she says it's returned in her liver. Ginsburg has been receiving treatment since May and she says she's seen positive results and remains fully able to continue in her post. So are you thinking of taking a road trip anytime soon? Up next, how the pandemic has affected the RV business and what you need to know if you're thinking about buying or even borrowing for your next trip. Concerns about the coronavirus have pushed a lot of people to switch gears on their summer vacations. Instead of airplanes and hotels, they're road tripping in RVs and sales and rentals are in overdrive. 12 on your sides of Maryland Moritz has a beginner's guide. You know, you can't go to the amusement parks. You can't go to the zoos right now. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to camp. So Karen and Mark Zohofsky are road tripping it this summer in their RV trailer. We absolutely do love going with our grandkids. We're leaving this weekend. That's all they've been talking about. And they'll have company. Some RV dealerships have seen a 170% surge in sales, many first timers. When people are looking to get out of the house, a motorhome allows you to do that while maintaining social distancing. It even allows you to avoid some places that you may feel less comfortable, such as staying at a hotel or going to restaurants. With an RV, you bring it all with you. There are two types of RVs to consider, a motorhome that combines living quarters and a vehicle in one, or a travel trailer. Motorhome can be expensive to buy. A travel trailer is a more affordable option. 
Now, of course, you're going to need a tow vehicle. Larger fifth wheel style trailers will require a heavy duty pickup to tow. Smaller trailers like pop-ups can be towed by most SUVs or even a car with a hitch. These are easier on gas and you can get in one starting at about 10 grand. If you want to try before you buy, rent. This company, RV Share, works sort of like Airbnb. They say business is booming, that bookings are up 1600% since April. RVing has become a summer solution. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Are you are you intrigued at all by RVing? Is that is that something? Yeah, absolutely. I kind of thought you would be. I could get on on board with that. Maybe we should make it a uh, remote work segment for the year. <laughs> you think? Fishing spots all across America. <laughs> yeah, and best barbecue as well. Well, look at that. You just you could load up the Kasky down. family and hit the road. Physical distancing right there. <laughs> Give us a hot spot. But I want to be where there's no cell service. That's the thing. That's oh, where I well. want to so be. that's called a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on here. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to go. Sorry, Kasky. I was going to go fishing this weekend, by the way, do some wade fishing along the coastline. But uh, they're closing down everything down there. and We're just going to play it safe and stay at home. All right, let's talk about the radar. We have some activity actually on the radar screen. Yes, this is nice to see something on the radar. Yeah, it's along the coastline, generally speaking, but at least somebody's been getting some rain. This is just the past few hours, but even earlier this morning, Houston was getting some showers and some communities right along the coast have picked up over an inch of rain. This is, these have been some really good downpours here crossing over I 37 right now. This is some good soaking rain and it is in parts of our viewing area. Goliad County clipping parts of Carnes County, Victoria, DeWitt counties getting in on some of that rain, even just outside of but near Floresville, a few little downpours have popped up with the outflow boundary from these showers that's moving into San Antonio. And this outflow boundary does have a history of a few brief showers. First Wilson County and then look right near Calaveras Lake along 1604. More recently, one little downpour, it has already dissipated. Nonetheless, that outflow boundary is moving into town. And it wouldn't shock me if one or two little neighborhoods here and there in Bear County actually had a brief downpour. But it's nothing but sunshine the farther west you go. Uh, Del Rio, Eagle Pass, and along the border, nothing but sunshine there. So let's talk about our weather pattern. This little swirl in the upper levels of the atmosphere near the valley, that's the upper level disturbance. It's the same one we've been talking about for several days. Has some good rain with it. Problem is, most of the good rain is over the Gulf of Mexico, right? It's not falling over South Texas, but we have had some of those showers work their way in. It's good to see at least somebody is getting some rain. We could use the rain, especially in the Panhandle and closer to the Rio Grande, but still there are some dry spots along the coastline that need the rain that are getting it. Rain chances as we go forward and not looking all that all that bright, just that typical coastal pop up activity day by day. Let's talk about the dust. It's evident out there today. It's a little there's a little extra haze in the sky and the dust is thicker today than the past couple of days. And as we get into tomorrow, very similar. The dust fairly dense. Then we get into Sunday and the winds push the dust westward and you're mostly going to notice it closer to the Rio Grande. But by Monday, it even on into Tuesday. More of a typical summertime haze, not what you see here. This is the typical summertime haze with the added African dust. Right now we're at 99 degrees, dew point is 65, so it feels like it's 102. 95 Bernie, 100 Divine, and Hondo, Holotus as well at the Century Market this hour, but notice the rain cooled air southeast of town. Victoria, 78, to Kennedy, 76. It's hard to believe at 519 p.m., compared to what we've had all week, that we have some 70s on the map right now. Well, the clouds and, of course, the rain-cooled air, giving them the, those uh, lower temperatures. So tomorrow, we'll start the day at 78, make it to 96, so not quite as hot. A 10% chance of a pop-up shower, mainly along the coastal plain, but there is that outside chance that one or two could move their way toward Bear County. Same story as we get into Sunday, then basically daily coastal pop up showers, mainly between I 10 and I 37 and high temperatures below 100.
I don't know what that says about me, how I have never been so excited to see 97 degrees. I know, it looks <laughs> it looks great after the last week. Yeah, it's been pretty rough. <laughs> All right, so we're still waiting to get a definitive answer on high school football, but there are definitely some clues out there. Well, from the UIL, coming Monday, we believe, but TAPS, which governs the private and parochial schools in the state of Texas, has now delayed their start almost until October. We'll have a reaction to that when we come back. And is DeJounte Murray concerned about the rush back to play, given his injury? Injury history coming up. Two weeks from today, our San Antonio Spurs will play their first game in the restart of the NBA 2019-2020 regular season in Orlando, Florida. In less than a week, they'll hold their first scrimmage for DeJounte Murray, who's come back from his devastating knee injury in 2018, cut short when the NBA went on hiatus in March due to the coronavirus. Does he worry about injury after that long layoff? Not me. Uh, other dudes may, but uh, me. He, I, I'm a fear, you know, I don't fear nothing. Uh, I'm a fearless type of dude. So, you know, I just take it for what it is. Uh, I'm a basketball player, and this is my job at the end of the day. Uh, you know, so you either going to get hurt or you're not going to get hurt. That's how you got to move around. And DeJounte with a new look as well. The Spurs' first game in the NBA bubble, set for July 31st against Sacramento. The Texas Association of Private and Parochial Schools has delayed the start of their high school football season until September the 28th. That decision made today due to the rising cases of coronavirus in the state of Texas will affect such schools in San Antonio's area as Central Catholic, Antonian, and San Antonio Christian, to name a few. Workouts cannot begin before September the 8th. The first scrimmage can't be held until September the 21st. As a coach, you're just looking for the opportunities to be with your kids and, and watch the development that comes through athletics. And while we're going to lose some practices in, in the beginning of the season, we are really, really excited to hear that we're still planning to have a season this fall. All right, the University of Interscholastic League, which governs most of the public schools in the state of Texas, expected to make their announcement on Monday. We leave you with this cherished moment as former Cowboys quarterback Tony Romo is in the process of teaching his sons, Hawk and Rivers, how to play football. You ready? What? Yeah. Okay. Ready? Wait. Wait. What, what are you, Rivers? The wide receiver. Yeah, the wide receiver. Okay. You ready, Hawk? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I forgot what to say. Wide eighty. Run your route. <laughs> Tell run. Him. Run that way. Run that way. No, I can't. I'm gonna have the ball. Well, you gotta <laughs> run without the ball so he throws it to you. Uh, okay, stop. now hold on. Stop. Come back a little bit. That's too far. Look. Right there. Okay, Hawk. Yeah. There you go. Oh, oh good job. Did you catch it? No. Oh, it it's okay. Did he hit your belly? Come here. Come here. I'm sorry. That's the way to send you into the weekend. There you go. Oh. You got to start with the Nerf. Love that. You got to start with the Nerf ball, Tony. That, Come on, that. a Nerf. Not in that family. That's hilarious. <laughs> we'll be right back. That's all our time. Thanks so much for watching the News at 5. World News Up next. We'll see you back here at 6 o'clock.